Morning guys. How are you today? Hope you're doing great. It is going to be very hot today, so I'm going to get out in the garden early. I'm ball winding some yarn right now because I'm suffering from <laughs> uh, the desire to move into my fall winter um, mode, which is sitting around knitting and binging TV shows. <laughs> Anyway, I because I have a uh, I'm working on a um, blanket, baby blanket for my husband's cousin for her first baby. Um, that's not going to arrive to her until after her baby's born, unfortunately. But I'm doing the best I can. But then I also just got the uh, first clue for the mystery knit along for Stephen West's uh, 2023 mystery knit along, and so I'm winding the yarn for that. And then this Saturday. Um, is the first class for my friend Donna Dracunis's uh, sweater knit along. So uh, that yarn should arrive in the next day or two um, and uh, we'll get started on that as well. So it's kind of crazy. I just want to be knitting and not actually doing all the work that I really need to do. Uh, it's not really so much that I don't want to do the work. It's just that um, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired, I'm ready for the season to be like over, over, so like I can put everything to bed and just, you know, move into my winter mode. But we're not there yet. Um, so, quick update. I uh, met with the my old landlords yesterday, and they would like to pay me to leave all of the um, infrastructure on the fish ranch farm, which is great because that's a lot less for me to move. <laughs> a lot less. So yesterday I ordered the fence kit and that should arrive hopefully next week. Get that set up on the new farm property and uh, tomorrow I'm going to go out there and start working on the irrigation. Um, the broken pipe is fixed. I've got my fittings. So I'm going to do first have to do a pressure test to see what kind of pressure I can get um, down there from the bib, which is over a thousand feet away. That's going to be real interesting. Um, and, uh, then we have to, um, this weekend, hopefully get the shed constructed. We've got to build the platform, uh, and then build the shed, but, you know, getting the fence up, getting the compost laid, I can't plant until that fence is up because that place is full of deer and they have already tripped over some of the strings, uh, that I've strung up and you can see where, you know, it's been drug of quite a distance up the hill so I know that it's deer um, and I've seen them out there so I'm not going to plant until I get the deer fence up but the seedlings are looking amazing in the greenhouse and they're getting big so I hope I don't have to bump them up to bigger uh, trays um, in the interim um, so yeah today however after I have some breakfast and finish winding all this yarn we are going to go in the front garden and uh, get a whole ton of work done up there um, I need to plant some seedlings. Uh, I need to put the bone meal and the blood meal down. And uh, we're gonna plant a whole bunch of onions, interplant onions with everything because supposedly that also helps with rodent deterrent. We'll see. Um, and uh, double check on the places that are missing, uh, that still have irrigation issues. I have a bunch of cleanup to do in terms of like putting stuff away, you know, like hardware cloth rolls and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, basically getting it all ready. I might cloche uh, if I can come up with enough, some of the stuff that I plant, just to let it get a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna put the rodent deterrent down and spray the peppermint oil everywhere, just kind of coat the whole area uh, and hope that they survive to get big enough so that then it doesn't matter if rodents come through the garden. So that's the plan for the day. I'm very tempted, it's gonna be super hot today. I'm very tempted to let the big girls out into the main garden with me and let them play. Uh, and root around while I work. Um, the only reason I don't do that on a normal basis is that that front garden is not covered and they could get picked off from the air by a hawk. Um, I doubt that's gonna happen if I'm out there with next to them working, so I think it's gonna be okay. I'm also super tempted to, while the big girls are playing in the big garden, to let the babies out into the run uh, to let them explore. <clears throat> the only thing I'm worried about with that is trying to get them back into that coop. When when they're that small, these guys are about six weeks old now. I mean, they're, they're a decent size, but 
they are super speedy. They're really hard to catch. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in that run. It's not like I can, it's not like a big open space. There's like places for them to hide. So I think it might be really challenging to get them back in the coop. That's what I worry about. Um, and I just don't feel that the time is right yet to introduce them to the big girls without the barrier of the coop uh, because they're still small and it's some of it comes down to size they've had plenty of time to start getting used to each other uh they've been in there for five days um and the big girls pretty much ignore them now but i'm still worried because when they start interacting face to face there still is going to be um, some tussles to finalize the pecking order and when they're really small it's much harder for them to uh, stand up for themselves so they're super submissive when they're babies like that okay well, I'm going to finish winding this yarn, have some breakfast, and then we'll get out to the garden and get started on our day. Because it's October, the garden is now mostly shaded until around noon. So not a lot of great sunshine for plants. Like they only get about six hours now or a little less, five hours maybe. Um, but it's good for working out there on a really hot day. <laughs> All right. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Oh my God, guys. So I have been... Uh, in the house working because we got a furniture delivery so i'm out here way later than i had anticipated being out here i came in to the chicken run to do an update for youtube shorts on francine and the little guys are out they escaped their coop uh, somehow the latch got opened and they're all out so there they are over in the corner uh nobody looks nobody's bleeding nobody looks picked on <laughs> I just am like, okay, well, this is not what I had planned. I was going to wait a while to introduce them because they're still small um, compared to the big girls, but no one seems to be, I mean, everybody seems to be okay. So yeah, th that's just crazy. I, that was unexpected. <laughs> oh man. Well, I'm glad I didn't walk out and see like a bunch of bloodshed. Um, like the big girls don't even seem to notice them. However, I think once the food comes out, we might start seeing some squabbling. So yeah. Uh, and it looks like the girls knocked over their food again. Hopefully the water's still up in there. Um, I'm going to leave the door open so they can go in there and escape if they need to. In fact, I'll prop it uh, so that the big girls can't get in, um, but the babies can in case they want to run and hide. And other than being She's really dirty on that one side, but she doesn't look injured or anything. Yeah, hopefully it's all gonna be okay. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> I just spent like 20 minutes um, watching them and the barred rock and the cuckoo moran, um, my two black and white chickens, they are the lowest on the pecking order and they were the ones going after the babies, which is pretty normal. Um, Flo and Francine just kind of don't care. Uh, but the ones who are at risk of losing their spot <laughs> do. So um, the babies were really trying to get back into their coop and they couldn't figure out how. So I rounded them up, put them back in, made sure I locked them in. Uh, they had spilled their water and their food. So I gave them new water and food, especially because it's hot today. And now they're in there eating and drinking. And I think that was more than enough of a field trip for them today. <laughs> so <laughs> poor things. Uh, but I, it was a good, I mean, not how I wanted, wanted it to do it, but uh, it's a good thing that they did get some intro. Um, so when they get a little bit bigger, I'll let that happen for real and they'll be able to stand up for themselves a little bit better. So, all right. Uh, took way longer doing the furniture thing than I thought. So now I'm in full sun and it's hot, but I got to get this stuff planted. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bone meal down, the blood meal onto the beds. I'm going to transplant what I've got and uh, try to cloche as much stuff as possible. Then I'm going to put the rodent deterrent out and spray the peppermint oil everywhere. It's a lot, but that's probably the only way I'm going to be able to keep everything from getting eaten. So I'm going to get going.
Okay, I am really hot and uh, I think this is going to be it for me today. I was going to try to clean up all that garbage down there uh, and fix that one part of the uh, irrigation, but it's not going to happen. It's very hot out here and it's direct sun. I'm done. <laughs> but uh, I haven't done the direct sowing yet. Hopefully I'll do that this weekend. We're supposed to get some rain this weekend, which would be amazing. It would be very exciting. If that's the case, then direct sowing would be wonderful. I want to sow peas. This is for carrots and uh, more radishes, this area here. But what I did was I planted stuff uh, close to some things. I only have a couple cloches and I interplanted everything with onions and shallots. Um, in addition to putting the blood meal down, the bone meal down, and the rodent repellent granules, um, which if you want to know what that is, this is specifically for rodents. It's not repels all, which is lots of animals. This one's called rat magic. Let's see, uh, treats up to a thousand square feet. It is cedar wood oil, castor oil, clove oil, and peppermint oil. So, smells amazing. It smells really lovely. But, uh, you know, so it smells really nice and pepperminty in here. <laughs> but only supposed to repel them, not kill them. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is go back through again with the peppermint oil spray and spray the heck out of the whole area, all the perimeters and everything, um, and then hope. Hope. <laughs> These tomatoes still need to come out, just don't have the energy in me today to take them out. And then this, um, this space down here beyond the irrigation that has nothing in it, uh, down to where the peppers are, which will obviously come out before the frost, because uh, there's actually some peppers on there. Um, this is all going to be garlic. So that and probably this area down here as well. Now this right here is called a collared tree. Um, looking really rough right now, but it'll be all right. This is a perennial plant, which you just harvest the leaves from consistently and it gets really tall. Let's see how tall do we get? Doesn't actually say. I thought it was gonna tell us how tall it gets, but. So, uh, that should be fun. Uh, we love collards. So I've got uh, different kinds of broccolis, Brussels sprouts. Um, I did plant our artichokes. Um, and like I said, interplanted everywhere with um, onions and shallots. Yellow onions, white onions, red onions, and shallots. So fingers crossed that I get to keep this crop. Um, I'll be honest with you, if all of this gets decimated, I'm not planting again. We're just not gonna have a fall garden this year. I just, I have too much other stuff to do than to keep replanting. So yeah, I'll be really upset, <laughs> but I'll also just be done. Okay, so that's done, and that's done done. <laughs> like I said, if something eats all that stuff, then we just don't have a, a winter garden this year, and I'm okay with that. So the only other thing I really have to do out there, um, in well, other than cleaning up, I really do want to clean up that area that's got all like the, you know, um, chicken wire and all that kind of stuff. I need to get that tidied and put away. Um, and I still have some irrigation to fix. But the other thing I need to do is plant that garlic soon. Um, it's, you know, we're not close to frost yet, and so I still have time. It's not like our ground freezes anyway, but I do want to get those all tucked in. A lot of people have already planted in our zone, so I wanna get those in soon. Um, and then um, in the back of the house, the cottage garden is a disaster. I've still not gotten around to cleaning that up. So that all needs to get cleaned up. Some of it, I might just wait and do it in the spring and just leave all those seed heads and everything. It'll look rough through the winter, but who cares um, because it'll provide shelter for wildlife. But I also have some planting to do back there. So um, the other day at the nursery, um, I picked up, you know, cause all the bulbs are out. <laughs> I picked up a whole lot of, a whole lot of stuff. Actually, not that much stuff. I have crates and crates and crates of tulips coming, but those are commercial tulips that I'm planting out at the farm that will be for selling next year. This is for the personal use. This is for the house. Um, so I got um, a whole bunch of stuff here that I don't even have a specific plan for yet, um, but I think will be really pretty once I do get it all sorted. 
So for tulips, and usually what I do is I plant up um, the the big um, wine barrels out there uh, with bulbs and then I have a big spring show that's really pretty. So for tulips I've got just mixes. Um, so I got this one, it's String of Pearls, White Dream and Strong Gold. And this one, another mix, uh, 18 tulips, they just say pastel mixed, um, but those are pretty. These are the Darwin style tulips. Um, and then this blend of uh, tulips and muscari, very pretty. And then I got a whole bunch of tiny tulips, uh, not tulips, tiny bulbs, crocus. Uh, so this little pack here, this one is uh, Anne Melange large flowering crocus. So I basically got two of everything um, and then I'll decide how I'm going to lay it all out later. Uh, this one is Orange Monarch, which I like. It's really, really pretty. Um, crocus and then I got Striped Beauty, which I also think is really, really pretty. So um, that's it for the bulbs. And those are going to go in um, probably the end of October. I would do it sooner than that, but I'm just not going to have time. But what I also got was some irises. Um, I really should not do this uh, paying retail for these because I can get them uh, um, as a grower, but these are gonna be for personal use. So. so I got, I think three of each. This one is Harvest of Memories. Um, purple Rain and <laughs> Clarence. <laughs> I think that's it. Oh, and there's one more. This one's called Blue Staccato. There we go. Yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to planting those. Those, all, those will all go out into the cottage garden. Um, the only irises I have out there right now are the black tuxedo ones or black satin or whatever. They're really, really beautiful. Um, so those will go out there. I also have a whole bunch of bags of, of uh, seed starting mix here because I have to start more flower seeds for the flower farm. I don't know when I'm going to get that done, but that's got to happen. Um, and then uh, the main focus uh, the next two days is going to be out at the farm, uh, the new farm. So tomorrow we're going to go out. I'm going to try to run. So we already pulled a thousand feet of, of irrigation uh, tubing, mainline tubing. Um, I'm going to connect it and up at the barn and see what kind of pressure we have coming out at the bottom. Um, and it is somewhat downhill, which is good because that's kind of the only way we're going to get any pressure down there. Um, so we'll get that set up and I'll see, you know, if I'm going to have enough pressure at all or uh, I'm assuming I'm going to need to buy a pump, but not, I've never been this far from a hose bib before. So I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to make it work. It'll be a redundant system because once the rains come, which sounds like it might be Monday and that, like I said, would be amazing, uh, but we won't be collecting at that point because I don't have that system set up yet either. Um, so my priorities out there the, uh, the irrigation, the compost, the deer fence. And those are kind of all equal priority uh, because even if I got the irrigation run and the compost put in and the beds were completely made and ready for planting, I can't do that until I put the deer fence up. So it's gonna be a lot of work over the next like two weeks. Um, and then once that's all done, I'll be able to really breathe for a little while. Um, and then I can slowly add stuff, um, infrastructure out there over the winter for, you know, planting up in the spring, um, other stuff. And so there's no rush on that, but being able to get um, all of the crops in the ground this month is really necessary. Uh, pretty soon all my ranunculus are gonna arrive and I still have a whole box of ranunculus that I saved from this year. Um, I have to get all of those pre-sprouted. Um, not starting on that yet because I, I wanna have, make sure those beds are made and ready or at least close to being ready before um, I start pre-sprouting the ranunculus because then they need to go in the ground. So yeah, lots and lots to do. It's all great stuff, but uh, it's a bit stressful. So, um, okay, so that's gonna be it for today. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful time in your garden and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.